Welcome to episode two of our um, IoT beginners class. And today we'll be focusing our attentions majorly on microcontrollers, all right? So in the course of today's teaching, I will be introducing three microcontrollers to us, and I will emphasize mainly on those three. There are other microcontrollers you can actually make use of for your IoT prototyping, or your IoT uh, design, but I will focus my attention mainly on three uh, major ones. With these three, you can easily get them from the market and they are actually easy to use, they are user friendly, okay? So with small money, you can actually get them, especially the Arduino uh, Uno board and the ESP32, all right? So microcontrollers. Now, remember yesterday we were talking about um, sensors, how sensors will, um, how sensors will, uh, will detect certain physical quantities from the environment and then send out an electronic signal. Now the electronic signal being sent out will be picked up by a microcontroller. The microcontroller will process the data, the electronic data that it has received, then it will interpret it and then perform a particular function, all right? So that is the major function of the microcontroller to be able to control everything that is happening within the embedded system. A microcontroller is a compact integrated circuit designed to gov govern a specific operation in an embedded system. A typical microcontroller includes a processor. The microcontroller has an internal processor in it that helps to process information. It has an internal memory where it can save data. It has both ROM read-only memory and it has a random access memory inside. And it also has input and output peripherals all on the same chip, one single chip. All right, so the microcontroller, most of the time, some persons refer to it as a microcomputer. It's a small computer that help you do um, some smart uh, stuff, all right? So understand the function of the microcontroller in the IoT prototyping, okay, to help you get data, interpret the data, all right? Then perform a particular function based on the data that has been received, all right? So let's look at the uh, microcontrollers that we can make use of. One of the, uh, the first and the commonest microcontroller that I'm going to introduce to you is the Arduino Uno board. The Arduino Uno board is very common, it's cheap. You can get them from the local market and you can actually start programming with the Arduino Uno board just by watching YouTube videos, good YouTube videos from YouTube or you start Google, get some PDF on Arduino programming. You can actually start programming with Arduino just by, um, sorry, just by um, watching these videos or reading through some of these PDF. There are a lot of free resources on the internet that you can actually uh, put together to start programming with um, Arduino Uno. All right, now get this, Arduino on its own is not actually a microcontroller. Arduino is an open source integrated development environment that enables you to program at Mega32 8 uh, microcontroller. This IC you see here is the at Mega32 8. This is the actual microcontroller. So Arduino has actually made it um, easy for you that it's already on the board and the Arduino uh, board has um, um, pins where you can actually connect you can do your testing, do your connections. After programming, you run your program, you debug your program, and everything can be on the same board. Are you getting it? So this is it. Let's quickly look at some features of your Arduino Uno board. It has uh, a flash memory, internal memory of about 32 kilobytes, all right? And it has a clock speed of about 16 megahertz, makes use of five volt, which is the operating voltage is about five volt, all right? So it has both uh, digital inputs and analog inputs. It also has a um, post with um, um, a modulated uh, pins too, okay? So it has, a, a, remember we talked about the clocking speed, which is 16 megahertz. Uh, the, and the, the, the crystal oscillator that is on the board is about 16 megahertz. That is exactly 16 megahertz. Now, let me tell you one thing about this Arduino board. 
Getting the Arduino board alone will not give you access to the internet. If you want to use the Arduino board as your mic, uh, as your microcontroller, you want to use the Admeg at Mega 328P, at Mega 328 microcontroller as the microcontroller for your IoT prototyping, then you will have to need external um, um, external networking shields, all right, to interface with this board in order for you to have access to the internet, in order for you to be able to transmit information from your local processor, your local microcontroller to the internet, or to receive, want to receive information from the internet, we need an external uh, networking facility, an external networking shield to be able to, uh, to receive that information, you need to attach that to this board, all right? So now, I've known that, there is the ESP32 board that has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on one single system. This small board you see here. It is cheap and it's also easy to program just like that. We know you can. The good thing about it is that you can actually program the ESP32 board making use of the Arduino IDE. Are you getting it? It's that easy. And, and, and the good thing about ESP32 and Arduino Uno is that they are all open source code, meaning you can actually get somebody's code that somebody has written in time past, all right? And when you get those, when you get those code, eh, you can, you can alter it to suit whatever you want to do. Are you getting it, man? So you have um, the ASP32 board. It has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So, you can actually program it and you just use the Wi-Fi to connect to an hotspot and then it gives you access to the internet. It has a memory of about 320 kilobytes compared to the Arduino Uno board that has a 32 kilobyte memory. Are you getting it now? So there is Raspberry Pi 3 or Raspberry Pi 4. This is the most expensive of the microcontroller. Let me tell you the truth. This is the sweetest part of IoT. If you have this board, if you can afford it, it will be very nice. It has um, all, this is a small computer you are seeing here. All the modern features of, all the features of a modern computer that you can never think of all exist in this board. Unlike the Arduino Uno board and the ASP32 that has a limited memory of about 320 kilobytes and the other is 32 kilobytes. This one, most of these boards come with um, um, an uh, external SD card of about four gig memory, four gig of external memory, which can also be expanded to any level, depending on the particular board that you have at hand. It has a space for USB, ports, you can interface USB port, a space for internet. And this same board has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth embedded in this same board too. Isn't that wonderful? It has port for other smaller USBs. You can, there's a particular screen you can interface to this board to give you that. In fact, this is a modern computer, a small modern computer that you can use for your IoT, all right? so. As a beginner, I will advise you to start with ESP32 board because it's cheap and it has both features, both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in one system. So you can just program it. You don't need to go and buy an external networking facility. Uh, you don't need to go and get an external networking shield. You can just get a router in your house or your client can get a router and then you just program this and then program the, the details of the router inside this chip, okay? And then once you power on this chip, this chip will automatically connect to that router and then it gives you access to the internet. You can receive information from the internet, over the internet. You can share data, exchange data via the internet. The only limitation is that you have limited space. So dealing with uh, images, Sending images, large images through this board uh, may not be very, very sweet, all right? But compared to the Raspberry Pi, 
you can you can actually uh, you can you can you can send images you can as well receive images you can even do it deal with large files because this is a modern computer although it's expensive so you can start with the esp32 board however if you really want your journey your journey in iot or embedded system to be a bit sweeter right you want to know about almost everything you can get an arduino no board and then you get the external networking shields like a wi-fi board you get um, a bluetooth board you then you you have to after programming your uh, your arduino board your at mega 32 8 microcontroller you have to program another program to be able to interface either your wi-fi board or your bluetooth board with this system or your ethernet board with this um, system that will give you more experience in your journey of embedded system and IoT. However, if you choose not to walk through this long path, this board is ready. ESP32, you can start programming it. The good thing about these three um, systems I've given to you is that they are all open source uh, systems. You can pick up a code that somebody has actually worked on before and then just um, uh, um, run the code on the board, decide to alter or change some features just to suit yourself uh, based on what you want. Are you getting it? So, and then you do whatever you want to do. It's all open source code. And somebody else can, tomorrow you can give your code to somebody else and the person decide to change your, your code and do whatever he wants to do just to suit his own design, all right? So, you can go on net, go to YouTube, watch videos on how to program Arduino. You can go to YouTube, watch videos on how to program ESP32. You can go to YouTube, watch videos on how to program Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 board. All right, so because of time, we're going to stop here today. Tomorrow, next tomorrow, we'll continue and then round off our class. My name remains George Otive. Thank you for staying with us.